Shar, B, Carol. Glad you made it. Oh, it's a wonderful Wednesday for sure. Hey, Julie, glad you made it here. Oh, did you guys enjoy the nice weather? A whole like 50, a little bit over 50 degrees today. It's like, wow. Oh, why do I have captions on? We don't need captions, do we? <laughs> hey, Teresa, Tina. I guess we'll spend the first couple minutes just saying hello, hello, hello. It's good to have you guys with me. Oh, it has, you know, um, I still do have some snow, but it's only those um, really tall things from when they plowed, you know, that's the only reason why we still have some. My car, my driveway is pretty well cleaned out now. Um, it's really great. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate that. Do you guys still see the subtitle thing showing on the page? That's weird. I did it off. Now go away. Oh, there we go. <laughs> know how to use a computer. Hey, Christy. Hi, Jan. Oh, so glad you guys are here. I'd give you all little hearts, 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 hearts. We have, when I do my classes um, with my kids, um, we do some um, social emotional things and we have our virtual greetings. The heart hands is one. Salute is another. A high five virtual. Um, fist bump. <laughs> the kids really love the hearts, though. Only 30 degrees, Lynn. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Now it's your turn. You know, um, so I'm hoping, I'm supposed to go to Pullman on Sunday to take my daughter's kitty cat back and um, a few things because when she came back from New Mexico, she was not able to get to Pullman by driving. We couldn't do it. The passes were closed. I-84 um, had a landslide. So... We put her on a plane to Spokane, and then her roommate picked her up. I think I might have already said all this. I don't even know. The days are a big, big blur. <laughs> hi, Betty. <clears throat> That's great you guys are saying hi. Now, um, hey, I want to talk about something. On the Stampin' Cafe, and I think all of you guys are members of the Stampin' Cafe. Hey, Becky. I put um, beautiful Minnesota today. Yeah. Hey, Minnesota was in the um, on Jeopardy yesterday about something. Uh, it was a, it was like a company that was housed in what state? And it was Minnesota. <laughs> hey, Linda, glad you join in. Um, on the Stampin' Cafe, though, I was I put out a poll about what is your favorite celebration item, and um, you know, it's so interesting. I was kind of surprised about it because right now um, the level two friendly hello has the most votes right now um, so that is kind of cool and I'll show you that I'm gonna transition over and I am just gonna have let's see yeah I'm just gonna have the stamping surface you guys because that just gives you the most uh, amount of, to be able to see so we'll go that route you can have you can have all this great stuff so yeah hey Colleen we're a big nice group tonight gals that's so exciting so yeah so let me show you our level two friendly hello here it is right here this beautiful little thing hello Colleen um, so the friendly hello yeah you know the beautiful stamp set I love this hello friend it's nice and large and then you've got a couple of great sentiments, but I also think the 12 by 12 paper, I'm thinking because it's a combo in this level two, um, you've got some coloring, um, thin line stamps that you can do some coloring. You have some bold stamps. I can see why it's charging out ahead. Yeah, you know, um, hey, I do have an extra friendly hello. So I'll have to think about how I might be able to award somebody that. Probably not tonight, though, because uh, my brain is mush. <laughs> yeah, it comes with paper and stamps. That's right. 
Oh, so everybody's really liking that one. I thought, I don't know, I kind of thought the otters would be like people's, you know, big time fave or something. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay, you guys, so I have some cards to share with you. Um, some more swap cards before we do a little basics of stamping. But this is one from Jenny Day, and it's another in the moment. Um, just a note, you're in my thoughts. And she's using that beautiful bricked wall background. And then, boy, just... You know, Stampin' Up's colors, right? Their color story is just so rich looking. She's sneaking another little stamp in here. And that is a stamp in the um, January to June mini as well. It's a floral stamp. Um, and then she's adding a little of that brick detail inside, which I always say, you know, dress up your inside just like the outside. Oh, the Simply Marvelous. Yeah, Christy, that Simply Marvelous paper, that paper stack with the, oh, all that it's like that polished stone technique you remember that and then this one here is the catching butterflies and this is one from Mary Bellis this is another idea with the little cute gal the level one the butterflies and the catching them she's adding the um, sunshine and rainbows designer series paper free level one as well and so um, there's just an idea of doing a little bit of a collage and windows. This is really great for when you have scraps. It's a great use of your scraps, you guys. So that's those two, and those were part of just make a card, send a card groups. And then some um, swaps here. This is beautiful paper. This is the, um, oh, what is this paper called? Let me put on my readers, you guys. Anybody else in that ballpark? Oh, it's from the Simply Marvelous, Christy. It's right here. Oh my goodness. I think I might use this tonight with one of our cards, thinking that would be really cute. But look at all those colors. Awesome, huh? Great for stamping on top of. With this side of the paper, you could stamp images right on here. Oh, it's beautiful. Just beautiful. Very dreamy. Here's another one here with the Honeybee Home. Problem with my glasses, <laughs> problem with my glasses, you guys, if I have my readers on, I can't like look at the screen and say who's commenting, but, and here's another one of artistically, um, whatever, <laughs> artistically whatever one. Um, that's another one. Person made their own background paper, designer series paper. So, hey, see, you don't need designer series paper, just make your own. And then here's another with the cute rainbow. And then we have another narrow note card. Now this one, here's an example, you guys. This was one, if you can see it closely. This white was the die cut, the die, and it just had all of those angles. And then she cut them again with different designer series paper from the same pack, and then she just laid them inside. Because when you do that die cut, these would all be emptied and you would have just the background of the cardstock showing. So that, that kind of was a lot of work there, huh? But isn't that pretty? Did a really nice repeated design on that. I love it. And this is one that is um, the abstract something. Uh-oh, just came up something about not being able to do something something, about comment posts or something, I don't know. But this is uh, that something abstract, whatever. It, it's something, I'll find it in the catalog, you guys. It's just not one that's for me. I guess I'm just not into abstract. I, I like my stamping stuff to like make, make pictures, I guess you'd say. <laughs> but the paper's fun. And it's the one that has the designer series papers actually a little smaller. It's Abstract Beauty Suite. And the suite has um, the stamp set here that has a lot of shapes and then some sentiments. But I just, um, yeah. Also has some mini note. These note cards are wonderful, you guys, because it already has some background done for you. And all you gotta do is like stamp stuff on, st on top. Quick, quick card making, that's for sure. So there we go on that. Hey, Michelle, thanks for sharing. Appreciate that. Okay, and this is, uh, Karen Monger, that cute little set with the cat and the fish. And then the robot one, again, made the own background paper there. 
That's Karen as well. And then B, I think B's with us tonight. You guys, look at B's Happy Easter Bunny and Little Chick. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I'll come up close. Look what she did. She went ahead and she did some cutting or stamping again and cutting out and have has the the little bunny's paws raised up and holding the little chick. I mean, can you not just say, oh my gosh? And then the brass butterflies, those little brass butterflies, they are so cool. That's so cute, B. Oh my gosh. And then I'm going to show this catching butterflies uh, one more time, just so you guys can see again um, that clean, clean image of the level one. I wanted to see just real quick on that level one catching butterfly, which my daughter Julianne, she's 24, and she was helping sort swaps with me. And she's just like, hate it. Hate it. And I'm like, why? It reminds me of your little, um, the cartoons we used to watch when you were little. It, the face of that little girl is just like some of those characters. But it has the cute butterflies here. You make my heart happy. Celebrate every beautiful thing. Collecting sweet thoughts of you. And then there she is there. There's even the little ground um, stamp that you stamp down. And just that little butterfly running away. So very cute. And there's there's a nice another sample for you there. Now something that Stampin' Up! has that I can, if you're interested and you would want it from me, actually has recipes of all the samples. Let me find a place to put my cards. Um, has recipes for all of the samples in their catalogs. And so I would be happy to link that for you. Um on my next blog or something and then you can you can download that and and have all those things all right one more thing I have to show you it's kind of Christmassy but this was a little thank you gift from um, Karen Davis I think yeah Karen Davis she had this in her swap package for me and how cute is this Starbucks hot cocoa but look at this spoon the peppermint spoon I mean, how great is that? I have been actually at work, they have this dish out and there's some little candy canes. And I keep, um, yeah, sure, they are great. I keep uh, eating the little candy canes because I'm kind of like, I'm just not done yet, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some basic things here. I want to talk about Stampin' Up! pads for a minute. Stampin' Up! Uh, you know, makes all of their own inks, stamps, and paper. And um, right now, you might see when you go online for shopping, you might see there's a lot of the ink pads are not available right now. Many are available, but many are not. And that's because even though Stampin' Up! makes, makes their inks and everything, the casing for the stamp pads is something that they purchase from suppliers. And even though they purchase from suppliers in the United States with these, um, the raw material shortage is really starting to, to have a, an impact. And so that's just something I want you to know. And why, if you're thinking, why are there so many, thing, uh, so many of those back ordered? That's the reason why. Um, I see that I don't have my stays on. Let me grab that. All right, and I'll grab this just in case. Now, I know you all know this because you're all stampers, right? But, you know, we might be stampers, but there's always some things that we can refresh ourselves on or that maybe we didn't know, but we were a little too afraid to ask, <laughs> right? But Stampin' Up! has a variety of ink pads, and you have to remember they all serve a different purpose. Now. Stampin' Up! has 48 colors plus 12 in colors. Now those in colors are temporary. They stay around for two years, but Stampin' Up! always has 48 colors um, in their collection at all times. There's four groups, naturals, regals, soft subtles, and bold brights. 
Now, Stampin' Up's heads have a compact opening where it has the little divot there and you pull up just like you were gonna do a powder compact for makeup, right? And it opens like that and then you slide it to lock it. Now, Stampin' Up's pads, as you notice, they are not a woven pad. They're more like a little sponge, okay? Now, that's important to know because you will get a really good clean image. These are water-based inks, right? So they will, they will um, run if they get wet. Um, they are water-based. Now, I want to show you a difference. I want to show you a memento pad. The Tuxedo Memento Pad, if I hold it closer, you can see that it's a woven stamp pad. I don't know if you can see the weaving, but it's woven. So sometimes if your memento ink pad isn't inked up really well and you go to stamp a solid image, you will kind of see the, the, the ridges. You will see that um, cross hatching of the fibers. Now, why would you use your memento ink? The memento ink is um, also you might not know this, it is also a water-based pad, but it is used when you want a basic, nice black image, say a sentiment, or you want to use Stampin' Up! coloring tools called Stampin' Blends. Stampin' Blend markers are alcohol-based, and you need to use the Memento ink pad for that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about our Stampin' Up! pads. One of the nice thing about them is you can use this tray here if maybe you want to do a little extra um, technique and um, do some water coloring. You can actually put some of your color right in that tray and it serves as that. But I want to talk about the refill. You will find that you use your ink up quite a bit and you'll want to refill whenever you purchase a Stampin' Up! pad, purchase the refill. But let's talk about re-inking that. When you re-ink your refill, you're going to want to just run back and forth, back and forth, really close lines, all the way across, just like so. Then turn it and do the same thing going the other way. Now you'll see it's all stripey because we are doing things with it and you might not like that. What you can do if you don't like what that looks like, because it's just temporary, you can use a blending brush. If you wanted to use a blending brush and you can blend like so, you can take a scrap piece of paper and you can scrape over the whole thing. Or what I like to do is I'm just gonna close my pad because all the ink is up at the top right now. I'm going to close it and if you notice, Stampin' Up's pads, when you close them, the ink is going to the top of the pad. That's a nice design of Stampin' Up's pad. When I open up my Memento ink, the ink's all sinking to the bottom because that's how it's stored and gravity's pulling it down. But with Stampin' Up's design, with it up, uh, going upside down, that ink's always gonna go to the top. But I don't want it to go to the top when I re-ink it. Oh, hey, Tammy. I want to turn this over now, and so now my ink pad is facing up, and that ink's gonna be able to settle down into the pad. I would suggest when you re-ink your pads not to use them right away, because you will get darker and lighter patches. I would let this sit and soak that ink through. So always get your refill with your pad. There's lots of good things you can do with your refills. Um, and, um, good techniques and things so you will not miss out. Okay, so we have the Memento ink that I said is really great just for basic um, outline stamping or um, sentiments maybe. And you must use this when you use your stamping blend alcohol-based markers. If you don't know anything about those, you don't have to worry about that right now. So it's a good basic black pad. You just cannot do any water coloring. Sorry. For some reason, I just got my pad moved around. Now let's talk about Stazon. Stazon is a solvent ink, okay? It's a permanent ink. Stazon is great. It is set up just like the Memento pad. It is a woven pad. So it too can uh, leave those lines on your images if it's not inked up real well. 
It is a quick drying ink, so when you get it, it has this little plastic cover. I just go ahead and take a glue dot and stick it down in there because I don't like lifting my lid and then lifting the plastic. I get too much ink on myself. So I, I go ahead and I adhere that right to the cap. It also smells, smells pretty good. I like the smell of it. Stays on being a permanent ink, it dries quickly because it's solvent based. So when you ink up an image, you're going to want to stamp it pretty quickly because it will dry. When would you want to use stays on? Well, stays on's awesome because you can stamp on window sheets, you can stamp on glass, you can stamp on plastic, you can stamp on all sorts of surfaces with stays on and it's permanent, it stays there. You can use stays on simply for your sentiments as well, just like the memento, but you cannot use stays on for your stamp and blend alcohol based markers. The hey Kathleen, the alcohol based markers will eat your stays on ink right off. So you'll be coloring a flower and you will not have a flower anymore outline of it because the stays on gets to eaten up by the stamp and blends. Okay, so no alcohol um, stamp and blends with stays on. Okay, you must use your memento for your blends. Now, the other great thing about stays on though is I can watercolor with it because it is a permanent ink. I can stamp my image, I can use my Stampin' um, Write markers, I can use my Stampin' Blends, I can use my water painters. Oh, I can't use my Stampin' Blends. Ooh, 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 cross that. I can use my water painters. Awesome. It'll be great. Okay. And then we have Versamark. Versamark is a watermark pad. It can be used, for example, say you do not have the Flirty Flamingo ink and you want to stamp on your Flirty Flamingo cardstock, but you don't have this ink. Let's take a look at what we could do with that. Let's get, I'm gonna get this butterfly from the amazing Silhouette stamp set. Beautiful stamp set. It comes, it is a bundle. It comes with a thin line die words, which is awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my butterfly on a block. There we go. And pretend I don't have my basic flirty flamingo. So if I ink up my butterfly and stamp on my cardstock, I would see it a little deeper than the cardstock because it is like a watermark and so is the, the ink. So let's see here, let me stamp it. And now you can see lightly that I have a butterfly holding that up there for you. Can you see it? You can see it, it's very lightly. So you can, you can do a little background on here. It is a tacky ink because the idea of Versamark is that you are going to do what's called embossing. You are going to pour powder over this and it will melt that powder and raise up a little bit or you can just create a soft background and that's what I've done here because I didn't have the Flirty Flamingo ink, but I had a Versamark, so I could do that. A Versamark is a clear stamp pad. It only has um, any tint because do you see how bad my Versamark pad is? It, it also is a sponge. Oh, crazy. All right, so now we've learned about some stamp pads, right? and the different uses of them. So I'm just gonna do very, very beginning basic cards tonight. Um, I know, Kathleen, you came on a little bit after I shared a couple of the, uh, shared a few cards tonight that had only Memento Tammy for Stampin' Blends, yes. Yep, 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 so here we go. Memento Stamping Blend Alcohol-Based Markers. Or you're, you're stamping up Stampin' Right Markers. That can work too. Stays On 
is for watercoloring. Okay. It is a permanent ink. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our butterfly here and we are going to do a really cute little card. Um, I'm going to use my flirty flamingo, but I'm also going to do a sentiment. And the problem is that I don't want my sentiment to get lost because I am only going to be using one color ink pad. And if I stamp my image and then I try to put my sentiment over top, they'll get lost from each other. So let's take a look and we'll ink up. Now notice I had Versamark on there. I, I'm not going to worry about cleaning it up. It's okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about stamping. Um, levels of color. So when I stamp once, that's called um, direct stamping. If I don't ink up again and stamp again, that's called second generation stamping and it's gotten even lighter. And if I go again, it's third generation stamping. Okay. So with one color of ink, I can get three tones of color. So let's take a look on our card, what that might look like. Now I think I'm going to need to start here and then I'm going to come over and then I'm going to go over. And now you can see I have my butterfly starting and then drifting off. that three tones of color. Now I want to do a sentiment and the problem is I would not want to do it the same color here but now because these are lighter I can go ahead and ink up in my flirty flamingo and stamp hope your day is on point and I don't know if that's going to be straight. Yes it is. Hope your day is on point. Very pretty. Right? Just really cute. Hope your day's on point. There it is. Basic stamping. And anybody can do that. But do you see how nice and dark that is? Over top, the lighter version of the Flirty Flamingo. Okay. Another thing I want to tell you about your stamp pads. What will happen with your stamp pads over time? We have a tendency when we stamp to stamp in the same place and we have a tendency to just push down once and then stamp, okay? I wanna tell you that that technique isn't the best to use. If we over and over keep pushing in the same place on our stamp pad, we're going to push the ink away from that spot. You're mushing it and you're pushing it away and all the ink is gonna come end up around your stamp pad and you'll notice you get that light coloring in the center. So. What I always tell people is I always do about two or three pats in different places on my stamp pad before I stamp. Okay, so let's get another note card. Now I'm gonna go a little differently with this one now. I'm gonna go this way with it and I'm gonna walk my stamp a few times going in different parts of my pad and this time I'm going to go just in the same strength of color oh and this one's gonna go off and I don't want it to oh well maybe I'll just make a background <laughs> with it oh now it's now it's like does it even look like butterflies here you guys oh, that's kind of fun look at that fun background now, because this stamp with the hope your day is on point is a bold line stamp, I don't think this sentiment's going to get lost. And it didn't. Yay. Now, there's two basic stamped cards that are cute as can be. If you have a little tool like a wink of Stella, it can take a little card that you've made and just give it a little more oomph by giving a little glitter. This glitter is all in the tube and when you press it brings it down in, into the brush. But I can just give a little 
hint of that wink of Stella and it gives a little lift. I can do that over here too. Just be careful when you do your wink of Stella. Don't do it. Don't squeeze over your card because you can see I've got a bunch coming out. I didn't necessarily want that much. But I can go ahead and do my little insides of my butterfly. You could do the outside. You could do the flirty flamingo. You just need to know. Here's another tip. When you are using Wink of Stella on color, remember Stampin' Up's basic stamp pads are water-based. So when you start coloring with Wink of Stella, which is a wet, a wet glimmer, it will cause your ink to bleed. So you just have to be a little dainty when you're in there doing that. But just look at that little glimmy, glimmy, glimmy that's done, right? It's so great. Okay, so there's a couple. Couple just quick, basic, stamping 101. You can do first generation, second, and third to get those colors. So let's take a look at another fun kind of thing that you can do with basic stamping. How about a cute little cactus cuties, you guys? How cute is that? Very cute, I say. Very, very cute. <laughs> All right. Yep, and Wink Estella dries very quickly, so there we go. Now, what's going to be really fun with this one is we are going to create a fun little just a note today. Let me go ahead and put this. I'm just going to put that on the case. And I need some more basic cardstock. So I'm just going to take this one. All right. And I'm going to use Misty Moonlight and Pear Pizzazz. And we're going to do this fun one right here, this pot. Now these are bold line and they're photopolymer. So Stampin' Up! has two types of stamps. They have the photopolymer, which is a kind of a sticky, clear stamp. And then they have the um, cling mount, or what I like to say rubber. The butterfly is an example of the rubber, and it has the foam between, so it has a cushion. Photopolymer does not have a cushion. That's why I use a foam mat when I stamp. You really do want some sort of stamping mat, a foam mat, that can cushion your photopolymer. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get a clean, clean um, image. And I'll show you that. Okay. So I am going to stamp my little pot. And what's really nice with photopolymer, it's so great because you can see right through it and you can see right where you're stamping. There it is. And now I'm going to do another one on my scrap paper. Because I can show you from basic stamping how you can do a little more interest Get a little more life in your card. Oh, hey, Judy, no problem. You can always watch again. Take a minute, Kathleen and Judy. Judy, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I don't know why you, those uh, catalogs didn't make it to you. That is so sad. And then I'm going to do this fun one right here, that fun cactus. They, they are sticky. <laughs> now, what is, is one better than the other to use? Um, they have different purposes. Photopolymer is great when you're doing types of things where you want to line them up because you can see right where you're going. Stamping on top of, right, uh, like if you have a dimensional something um, to stamp. And because I can see the edge of my plant here, I can stamp it right where it needs to go on my card. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? <gasps> so cute, but we're not done because you know what you guys? You see that little flower right there? That's like for blooming on the cactus, right? Oh, and I got flurry flamingo sitting out, so we can do that. So cute. 
I had this is the first time I'm playing with this cactus cuties, you guys, and I'm just like, oh, it's so cute. Now, Stampin' Up has a variety of blocks, and I always tell people you should just go ahead and get the whole collection of blocks and the carrying case. I think it ends up being like seventy dollars. <gasps> level one host, uh, level one celebration, or hey, get that, and then. Um, Get a couple stamp sets and you got the friendly hello level two celebration that everybody loves <laughs> now didn't i say i was doing another i think i'm just going to do the pot sec uh and and do that so okay let's put that there grab my scissors real quick because yes in basic stamping you guys you don't have all the bells and whistles of die cutting machine and all that kind of stuff for dies, but besides that, this doesn't have dies. So even those of us who are avid stampers, sometimes you just gotta do the fussy cutting. And it's okay, this basic thing right here, easy peasy, but I did kind of mess it up already. <laughs> That's all right. Now, why did I stamp it on the card as well if I'm just doing this? Because it really does need to be there because our eyes can kind of see around things a little bit. And so stamping it there and then using your Stampin' Dimensionals, which is another basic tool supply that you need when you're doing stamping, because we don't want everything just to be flat, right? I mean, it's so great. The butterfly card is beautiful. Both of them are beautiful for a quick little something, right? All right, so now we'll go ahead and take this off. Put it on here and if you did a little color uh, cutting oopsie like I did I, I clipped that corner a little bit you don't even know it but look at that dimension it gives it isn't that fun Stampin' Up has two different kinds of dimensionals we have the white dimensionals and we also have the black we have mini dimensionals and standard size why do you use the black well Sometimes when we turn, we don't want to see that white in between because when you, you can see that it's got the white in between there and the black won't show. And so using the black would be great. Now the little flower and my flirty flamingo ink. You guys, do you ever, have you ever, I'm sure you do this. Have you, <laughs> have you, um, taken out and used a stamp and then didn't put it back and then you're like I don't know where now notice I'm padding again and I'm going around my pad because I want my ink to stay evenly spread in this pad I don't want to cause cause it to go oh my gosh oh my goodness all right if Cheryl were here you guys know Cheryl Cheryl's the one that I tell you she always posts on Facebook the most beautiful, beautiful scenery from where she lives. And it's always just so great. But she would just totally, totally recognize that. All right, now this one's going to get just a little, little hello. All right, and now this is where my memento ink is going to come in handy because I'm going to do it in black. Boop, boop. All right, let's do it right. Lay your stamp down. Line it up on your grid, except it sticks to my finger. And, bonk. But it's photopolymer, so I can see it, right? Well, anyway, I have this little stamp floating around. It's a 4U stamp, and, and I do not know what set it came out of. I always stamp after I have inked up, you guys, just to make sure I'm on the right. Okay. Hello. <laughs> I mean, hello. Okay, now, that's great, you guys. But one more thing we can do is I love this. I could also get a stamp that has just a bunch of little, a little dots and do some little background dotting if I want, or I can go ahead and grab some bling. Rhinestone basics or the, like the brass butterflies or any kind of little basic here like this. 
will be great to add a little little something something to your your project so we're gonna have a little hello a little hello there and these are the iridescent basic jewels and what's nice about them is they will take on any pinks yellows greens clear very nifty this is a package of the iridescent rhinestone basic jewels that you will be getting if you sign up for my love and happiness specialty class that's one of the free parts of your kit so how sweet is that you guys i mean it is so cute oh all right well, you know, we have to do something again with that because it's just too cute. I'm gonna show you another way that we can do something. We're going to make this card again, but I'm gonna show you just a little bit different thing you can do. So where is my Misty Moonlight? You guys see here? I re-inked my Misty Moonlight but then I also did some watercoloring things in here and I can watercolor again because it's right there on my lid and it's it's being protected so that's always nice just know that there's lots of ink around you want to kind of protect yourself all right so we're gonna do this well photopolymer you really want to make sure on these solid stamps that you've got a good amount of ink on there there we are. And let's stamp this again. I am not cutting them out this time. But I'm still going to get some, aww, what did I not do? I did not make sure, but guess what I can do? Because it's photopolymer, I'm sorry if I'm not in the shot, but I need to see where I stamped. Can I do it? Yes, I did. Not perfectly, but I did go over it again. That's the nice thing about photopolymer. If you kind of missed a part, or hmm, Stamparatus would have worked really well for that. Nichelle asked for a little bit of Stamparatus stuff, so we shall see if I can get to that. Um, but that is an idea for that because uh, you, can, it's our, you can line it up perfectly. I am looking for my little block for my flower because we need to do the flower again because it's just too cute. Now notice right here, my little guy's not quite there, but that's okay. Flower, flower cute cute now remember I said I had a where did I have that I have some scrap of this and now I'm going to bring in a punch okay this is a banner punch you basically put a piece of cardstock in there and you can cut it and it'll give you a nice banner type edge there now I have to, let's see, let me grab my trimmer real quick. Paper trimmer is a must, is a must when you stamp. I'm going to go with a three quarter of an inch strip. Oh, my cutting blade's not there. Ah! Where'd my cutting blade fall off? Oh, well, here, I'll just do this. I can do it. Nice thing about Stampin' Up's paper trimmer is it does have a cutting blade and it has a scoring blade. So we're going to do the just a note. You know it's not going to matter that I didn't get it right on there because my just a note's going to go over it. Maybe I want to do it in white though and not green. And I think green will be just fine. Take off my cactus. 
that is crooked. But because it's photopolymer, you can still stamp with it crooked. You just turn the block a little bit, right? <laughs> All right, now I'm going to use my memento ink again. Ink it up really well. And definitely want to pat it and move it along on the memento pad because it is a woven pad. You don't want to get a bunch of those lines on there. And then I'm going to stamp my just a note right here. Just a note. Very cute. And I am going to trim a little more because I'm not quite straight. Of course I'm not. Much better. Let's go a little shorter this way. And then I'm going to turn this upside down and slide it in here. Put it right to the end and punch. See how I've got that cute edge there? I'm going to do the same over here, but I think I need to cut just a tiny bit off. That's also crooked. Sorry, my cutting blade was not on my trimmer. I was using my trimmer upstairs um, when we had no power <laughs> for light. And it was too cold during the day down here with the however, whatever degrees it was. There we are, and there we are. I'm going to raise this up with dimensionals now. So that's where our dimension's coming from on this card. It's not from the images and stamping them and cutting them and putting them on, but it's just raising up your image. I mean your sentiment, excuse me. Hey, Cheryl. <laughs> Oh, your blender pens to, yeah. That's great. So just a note, and just like that, we have two cute, cute cards. I think I could add the dots to the gems to those too, don't you? I think so. This time that's going to go there, though. Oh, I love this um, gummy side of my Take Your Pick tool. Where do I want this one to go? I got, sometimes i got to hold it up, you guys, just to see where I want it. Just a note and hello. And what did we use? We used our Stampin' Up Misty Moonlight watercolor based ink pad, Pear Pizzazz. We used Memento Black, which is just a basic black for stamping sentiments, even, you know, stamping images if you want to. But remember, stamp and blend markers with this. No watercoloring with that. That's not good. Oh, bling does make everything better. You know it. All right, so there's two more basic stamping and just giving yourself a little more um, interest by raising up a sentiment or cutting out and adding dimension to your actual image. Be cute to cut out these little flowers and add them on top too. That would be really cute, but I won't take the time to do that, but that would add another fun dimension. And our couple of butterflies there, really nice. Okay, now, basics of stamping. Stamps, ink, and paper so far. That's great, you guys. I have a little more time to talk about I know it's a little long today, but the Stamparatus. Stampin' Up! has the Stamparatus tool. Some people have the, you want to call it the Misty, right? Or I'm sure Tim Holtz has something. 
Um, Stampin' Up! has a two plate system here that are on hinges and the hinges actually do come out, the plate comes out and you can move the hinges down and get some even spaces that way. Stampin' Up! also has this raised pad with the grid, a great, great um, technical thing. When you are using your rubber cling mount, you do not use this foam pad because the cling mount has its own padding. But when you use a photopolymer pad, that photopolymer pad has no cushion and that's where this comes into play. It's your cushion. So if you have the Stamparatus, you can actually just use this at your stamping table and use that as your padding for your, um, for your um, photopolymer stamps, okay? All right, so let's take a look at grabbing this right here. Because we are going to do a card with, uh, something with this real quick. I know, Nichelle, you asked for some like two-step stampin', but I'm going to do that for, I think, next time of Stamping Basics. But we're going to take these stripes and these hearts, mm, the outline hearts, and the outline hearts. Okay. Now I need to grab my paper here, you guys. I used an extra of the note cards, and I didn't have another piece of white. Give me a second, guys. Give me a second. I'll be right there. I just need a piece of white cardstock. Can I get a piece of white cardstock, friends? Can I get a piece of white cardstock? No, I can't. Well, fine. Oh, my goodness, you guys. All right. Because my trimmer does not have its cutting blade, I'm going to have to improvise. Going to have to improvise. All right. I'm just going to use this to show you guys. So what the um, Stamparatus has are two very, very strong magnets. You do not want to put your magnets together next to each other because they will grab onto each other and be very difficult to, um, to separate, okay? So I'm going to set this down and it is photopolymer, so I'm gonna leave my pad right in here and I do not need both of my plates. So I'm gonna take this one and set it aside. You might say, Mary, when do you want two plates? Well, we could have used two plates with our cactus. We could have used this top plate for the, the top of the cactus. We could have used the side plate for the base. And I could have lined up my base on here, my topper on here, and I could go dunk, dunk, and do multiple, multiple cards easily. So I'm going to use my magnet to hold that in place there. And I'm going to go ahead and Mm, I only want one. All right, so now I'm going to put my hearts I'm going to put my, you know what? I want to do the other hearts. I want to do the bold hearts. Okay, and I'm going to use the Flirty Flamingo because that's what I have. And my heart's going to go right here. Oh, I don't need a block. What am I doing, you guys? <laughs> you lay your stamp down where you want it. And again, you guys, these always stick to me. Okay, and then I'm going to pick it up with the plate. You will need to know that um, photopolymer is sticky. All right. So then I take my flirty flamingo, ink up my little hearts, and I push down. 
feet. Lift up, and I got the cute little hearts. Now, I am gonna go down two hinges. One, two. I'm going to ink it up again. Stamp again. Push. Oh, where's, I could use my tool. I have a tool. And I'm gonna go down two more again. One, two. Now, obviously, my card base is bigger, but that's okay. And ink again. I didn't go all the way to this edge because what you need to know is that the plate sits up higher on this edge. And so it goes down on an angle. So anything real close to here is farther away than over on this side. So I keep things moved over this way. Now that I've done my heart, I'm gonna move it. And I am now going to put the stripes on. And again, just because of the colors I have out, you guys, I'm gonna use pear pizzazz. It's a very strange heart card, <laughs> but I didn't pull out a whole bunch of inks. Now, I did my first one here, and so I wanna put this guy right between, because I want it to be even right between. Okay? And I wanna wipe, hold on, I need to wipe. I got a bunch of ink on there, I don't want that ink on there. All right, so now we're gonna pick it up. Ink up. Whoa. And stamp. Okay. Now I'm gonna come down to why am I coming down two? Remember I went down two with my hearts, so I'm gonna go down two with my stripes. Raise this up a little bit, guys, sorry. Push, push, push. There it is. And then I'm gonna go down two more again. press again. Okay, so now I have perfectly lined up hearts to stripes evenly spaced just by matching and coming down two hinges each time. Now we're going to get fancy. Let's see if we can do this. Let's take our little hello and we'll use our memento to throw a little boldness in there. Now our hello had ink on it, so let's make sure we got all the ink off. And that's gonna go right here. Hello, hello, hello. Let's try to make sure it's straight. Does that look straight, guys? I can't tell. Yep, okay, looks straight. Let's get that ink off our plate. Let's pick up our hello. Let's ink them up, ink it up. Doot, 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 doot. You like the sound effects? And hello. Oh, cute. Now we're gonna go down one. Ah ha ha ha. Only going down one. Now, I could check, right? I could lean it over and say, okay, I need to do it there because I wanna put a little hello between each one. I'm gonna even come up there and put a hello at the end. So I'm gonna come down just once and there's my hello. Come down once and put my hello. Then I'm gonna go all the way back up to the top and the only way for it to get my hello up here is I would have to lay it out again 
where I want it because I didn't start it there. If I started it there, it would have been fine, but I didn't. Then I'll pick it up. Now I didn't show you because none of my hearts stamped poorly, but if I didn't get enough ink on those hearts or the stripes, I could simply ink it up again and stamp. Now look at that cuteness, you guys. Keep my magnets away from each other. So now what I could do is I could cut this out because I don't have my, my cutter blade. There's always a plan B, right? Not, that's not cut so well. But that's okay. I have a piece of flirty flamingo cardstock. Let's see what we can do. Oh, with those butterflies stamped on it, right? Yeah. It's too long. It'll have to be on a narrow card. But you see how it evenly spaces everything out like that? It's just awesome, right? So that is just a little 101 with the Stamparatus. There's so much more that you can do with it. Um, and so I'll get a series of that going too. All right, so you guys, let's take a look here. Let me put my, let me just put these away because that just worries me. So we have our perfectly lined hearts and stripes and hellos. We had our cute couple of quick stamped butterfly cards note cards. This one showing you the different tones of generations of stamping. And then we have our two really cute, really cute cactus cards for the stamping basics of just some stamps, inks, and paper right now. Ooh, sorry about that bright light on that one. That's terrible. Maybe that should come over here. <laughs> All right. So fun. So fun. Um, so just another thing, my um, specialty class for January, the Bouquet of Love Hybrid Embossing Folder and the Love and Happiness Stamp Set. I've got five wonderful projects um, getting prepared for that. It's a $25 class. And I will um, be sure to uh, put the links and everything and, and tell you guys about that again. Um, because it's going to be just a great class. That's on in person on the 23rd of January, or the kits get shipped out on the 24th. And remember with that one, you're getting the iridescent gems, and then you're getting this double pack of ribbon. And so if you can't make in class, you can always do the to-go classes. That's awesome. I have prizes in envelopes getting addressed, ready to come out from Monday's um, live. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the stamping basics and you got some information. I know you like the idea of getting all the recipes and so I will also do that. Um, I'm gonna do a blog and on my blog, that's where I'll have the link for all of those things because I might post these little quick little uh, cactus cards because they're so cute. Um, and then um, you can get the recipes just clicking those links, okay? Uh, what else you guys always, um, go ahead and always message me and let me know what you would like tips on or what kind of things you would like. What I'll focus on next time in the um, Stampin' Basics will be two-step stamping because that was something else Michelle wanted to see. Okay? Yeah, it's great having you guys here. Thanks so much for joining me. You know, it's always fun. My husband's bowling tonight, so I'm not infringing on him. And um, check out that Love and Happiness class. You won't... You won't um, you won't regret it. And uh, until next time, guys, happy stamping.